let's look at how to draw and sketch graphs. There's actually a very big difference between them, and most students uh, find them confusing. That's just why I wanted to show you the difference. So sketching a graph is much less detailed than drawing a graph. In sketching a graph, you just need to do a quick, like let me just show you how I would sketch a graph. I might go like bang, bang, x, y. Don't forget to label your axes. I would label the main shape. So as long as I get the shape right, so I don't know, maybe the graph goes like uh, something like this. All right, good enough. That's a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. But make sure you get the key features. Now, what are those key features again? Those are your x. Uh, actually, I'll just say this. I'll say the intercepts. So that's the x and the y intercepts, right? You need to make sure you get the asymptotes uh, and maybe the max and the min. Those are the main things we might care about. So like in this case, there's no asymptotes, but there are some intercepts. So maybe I would label, you know, this one and this one and this one and this one. Those are all the zeros. And I maybe also label that one and that one and that one. Just give a rough idea what they are. Maybe this is like one. Maybe this is, you know, minus one and so on. Maybe this is like minus two, maybe this is minus one, maybe this is one, and maybe this is two or three or something like that. So as long as you do something like this, you're okay. Um, that's sort of the idea behind it. Whereas a scale diagram, so for drawing a graph, there it needs to be much more detailed. There I would say, all right, you you know, use a ruler if you can, do a really nice job with your axes like this. You would first, you would actually put the scale, like you'd, you'd be, how's this? You'd just be much more careful. So for example, here I would sit there and go one, two, three, four, and five, and so on. Do you see what I mean? Like there, really get a bunch of key points here. And that's only if I'm graphing it over here. Maybe I have to graph it, you know, to the left and bottom as, as well. So here I would actually sit there and, and put, you know, all the points, maybe this one here, then maybe you know, that one is there, maybe that one is there, maybe this one goes like this like that maybe so then I would sit there and you know maybe I would make sure I graph the whole entire thing make sure it's clear so basically this is more detailed it takes longer yeah sketch is just like boop, boop, just draw the key features that we need uh, you might be wondering why I put this here you ever seen the movie Jaws it's a really <laughs> cheesy old movie I loved it as a kid it scared the <laughs> Dickens I just so scared uh, but it's this uh, it's supposed to be Jaws, right? Why did they put X over sine X? Actually, I saw someone uh, posted this meme on Reddit, and I thought, like, oh, I think it's so brilliant. Why is it X over sine X? Let me show you. I thought it'd be fun. I actually did the graph of X over sine X. Look what it looks like. X divided by sine X. Doesn't it kind of look like teeth? So I thought, ah, that's actually brilliant. So let's, let's look at the steps to follow when actually sketching. So step one, I think, is to see the graph on your calculator. So you need to actually see it. So uh, it, depending on which calculator you're using, I'll just give you a few tips at least for these ones here, for the Texas Instruments ones. But the Casios do the same idea. On the Inspire, you open up a new page, do a graph, put in your equation. If you're on the TI-84, on the top left, press Y equals. Make sure you say Y1 and then press the graph button. Now you'll see your graph. You need to be in the right window, though. This is especially important if you're drawing a graph. They'll usually be very specific with like the X's and Y's and what you need to see. So you may want to play around with the windows here, especially if the domain and range are restricted. Remember domain, that's your X values, remember? Domain is all your possible X values, range is all your possible Y values. All right, so uh, on the TI Inspire, what do you do there? Well, once you look at your graph, you can then ask it, you know, uh, well, I always press menu on the TI Inspire at least, and you go to window, and you can do zoom standard, you can do zoom fit, you can do zoom trig, you can do zoom stat. Same thing with the TI-84 actually, except you have a button called window, or you can press zoom. Window is to actually set like the, the X's and Y's and uh, the scale for those. Zoom, you can do again standard, zoom fit. I really like zoom fit. If you can't find anything, I press zoom fit. Like Ah, thanks. Zoom standard does it from x equals minus 10 to 10 and y equals minus 10 to 10. Now you're going to need some specific values as well. So that's where it helps to know what to do there. So that's why I'm showing you this one. So you need to know some specific points like the maxes and the mins and the zeros and things. So on the TI Inspire you can just go menu, press trace, um, and then you can actually just type in specific x values if you need them 
or uh, you can, as, as you trace along, it'll actually even tell you, because the TI Inspire is quite nice, it'll tell you, like, oh, this is a minimum, this is a max, you might care about these. The TI-84, though, I don't really like their trace function. It doesn't do a very good job of that. There, I, would, I think it's better to do, uh, you press the calc button along the top, and you either do value, or you can do zeros, maxes, or mins, or intersections. By the way, you can also do that here on the Inspire. And finally, just sketch or draw, depending on what you need to do. So there you need to label your key features, but the question is, are you doing a really detailed job if it's drawing, or are you doing a more dodgy job for a sketch? Sketch takes way less time, right? Basically just think, this is a scale diagram. That is the key thing, or the key distinction between drawing and sketching, is this one here has a scale diagram. That means, every, like, really, you need some points drawn. So, let's do an example. I like this one. <laughs> you must be plotting something. <laughs> Oh, so stupid. Uh, to sketch this graph, we actually don't even need these distinctions. If we wanted to draw the graph, we would really need these. But for sketching, we don't really need to worry about it. So let's just see here. We're going to try to draw this graph. f of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 20. I don't expect you to know what this looks like off the top of your head. So let's do a graph. So I'm going to add a graph here. I'm going to tell my calculator the equation. So x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x. I know it's boring to watch me do this, but just bear with me. Boom. Now, it helps to have the right window. That's just why I gave you a little hint here. So let's, let's play around with this. So I could go menu, and I could say uh, window or zoom, and I can say zoom out. I could do that. That's what a lot of students do. Um, I could do zoom standard. That just gets me at minus 10, 10, minus 10 to 10, or roughly so. But that's not actually very good. But because I was told the specific window, then I can actually set the specific window. I can say, all right, give me minus 10 to 10, which is good. I'll just press tab here. I'll press a 1 here. I just want to tick mark every 1. Now for my y min, let me do what they said here. So minus 20 to 20. And I'll do a tick mark every one. And this might help. At least the graph looks a little bit more clear, doesn't it? So that's just what I want to show. Whoops, I think I was supposed to do it to 25, wasn't I? That was silly of me. There we go. I can see that up the top here. It's supposed to be up to 25. So I'll delete that one, write a 5, and go. There we go. It looks kind of like this. So I'm going to attempt to sketch this, okay? So up like this, then down, then up, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect because it's a sketch. So all right, so up, then down, then up. It doesn't have to be perfect, something like that. Did I get the right shape? Let's just see here, just to make sure I got the, I mean, I have to have the right shape. So yeah, it's good enough, isn't it? And then I'll just label my key features. So what are the key features here? Well. I've got some things going on. I've got some zeros. I've got this, and this, and this. If I even wanted to, to be extra fancy, I could actually state them. Now in a just sketch, you don't have to, but usually a question on an exam will be, you know, first sketch it, then tell us what the zeros are. So I just want to show you, you could, you could itemize them all, and you could say x equals whatever, x equals whatever, and x equals whatever. Do you see there's three zeros? There's three places where it crosses the x-axis. So. How do I ask my calculator for that? It depends on how you prefer doing it. Um, if you're on the TI Inspire, I just like to do trace. Because as I go along, watch this, as I just trace along, it's going to stop and tell me, ah, zero. Do you notice it was at minus two? Then as I go along, it's going to be two and five. So minus two plus two. And five. That was nice of it. Otherwise, I could force it to. I could ask it for zeros and go left bound, right bound, or whatever. So now I know this is minus two, this is plus two, and this is five. See, it's not even to scale. Notice this isn't the same distance as this. Who cares? It's a sketch. If it was a diagram, then I've done something wrong. And if I've done an actual draw, sort of, if I'm asked to actually do drawing a graph. So I just want to show you that distinction. So here it's fine to be a little bit dodgy like this. Uh, maybe I want to know my y intercept. That should be easy to see. I can see it uh, by setting x equals to 0. So this is 0, that disappears, it disappears, disappears, this is plus 20. So that's my y-intercept, so that's good. I just, I just put it here. I don't necessarily need to state it. Maybe I want to know the max and the min. So there's a local max here. I'll maybe put the coordinates here, and maybe I'll put the coordinates here. 
OB coordinates. I don't know what they'll be. We'll figure that out now. So I can ask my calculator for that. So I could have just used my trace again and then gone along it. Do you notice I could just sit there and go along? You'll see like, if I go a little bit further, notice it says it's 3.69 and minus 12.6. All right. So 3.69 minus 12.6. Keep in mind they're approximate. It's probably guessing. Uh, not guessing, but it's uh, it's probably rounding, I mean. So there's the three significant figures, but that's fine. You're supposed to do that on exams. There's my minimum. My maximum, I want to show you a different way to do it, just for fun, because I could, of course, keep tracing. But let me do analyze, and I'll do give me the max, just to show you. It says, where's the lower bound? So the max is up here, right? I have to go a little bit below it. Upper bound, now it asks me for, so I go a little bit above it. It's just because it wants to know where to look. Do you notice now I have this now? So it's minus 0.361 and 20.7, 20.7, something like this. Right? This isn't perfect, of course, but that's why it's a sketch. It's more than good enough. Um, and that's it. We're done.